right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Let's start off the discussion. We'll talk about the VBI and everything else in between there. Start off with the dailies as well. Hear the thoughts, their legal minds in studio. Professor Tom Ojenda, senior counsel and advocate of the High Court, is here. Thank you so much for making time. Dustin Omari is also here with us, advocate of the High Court. Asante Sana for making time. Let's start off with the dailies and see what's going on. The standard should be fast. Let's take a look at that one first. Before we talk about the Uhuru Raila's last bullet to save BBI, let's talk about something else that's happening here. High dramas, police raid, Jimmy Wanjigi offices, officers from the anti-terror police unit outside the Nairobi offices, Vodian politician Jimmy Wanjigi, you can see them there. And Omari, I'll start with you. What do you make of this whole fiasco? Because there's a tweet from Kipchumba Murkom and Elgeo Marakwet Senator. He says, I really sympathize with Jimmy Wanjigi. In 2013, he supported Uhuru. He was then a good man. In 2017, he supported Raila Odinga. And to Tinga, he was a hero. And to Uhuru, he was enemy number one. Now, when he deserves combined support of Uhuru and Raila, they combine forces to harm him. Siasa ya utapeli. I'm sorry that uh, you've jumped my senior. You know, we do not talk when seniors <laughs> are present. Unless he allows me to take the floor first. <laughs> Senior, what do I do? No, I, I think you have leave to, to, to start. Ah, very well. yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Senior, and you know, he's, he's going to be the next senator in Kisumu. When I'll be flying there, I'll be seeking permission to enter Kisumu. Yeah. Well, politics will not stop being politics. A friend is a friend depending on that interest that you are pursuing now. Jimmy Wanjigi has had a checked career with all the politicians. First, he was the greatest founder of Raila Odinga. He was a daring. Now they are not in the same position. Therefore, he has no interest. Both of them have different interests and aspirations. Murkomen see a chance to get uh, Jimmy Wanjigi on their side. Perception-wise, Jimmy Wanjigi is supposed to have bottomless uh, pockets enough resources to fund any politician. Rumor has he ran ODM two, two times. Third, the Jubilee formation, there is a, perception, a political perception that Jimmy Wanjigi funded and also that party was formed in his own house. So really when you look at Jimmy Wanjigi, he's an asset. The other day we saw Wiper. Uh, Kalonzo uh, looking for him is is a is a good is a good a beautiful lady any politician would want so Murkomen is trying to say come this side yeah and most likely uh, once the two formations if it's true the politics of this day will remain between Baba and William Ruto Jimmy Wanjigi is likely to move towards the the uh, Murkomen side. All said and done, the question is, does he add value to the Kenyans of Kenyans who are going to vote? Yeah. Jimmy Wanjigi might not add any value. Does he bring resources to the parties and the interests that are looking for him immensely? Yeah. He's one of the financial assets any political formation will be going for. If legally, uh, politically, that is the position, but legally, he was arrested. A serious uh, legal question is going to arise in court. Because when I looked at uh, what happened, yeah. the, high, the lower court gave a warrant after Jimmy Wanjigi failed to appear in court. There is confirmation that if Wanjigi, a warrant was issued, that it means his charge sheet must have been approved by the DPP. Yeah. And therefore, the magistrate issued a warrant because of non-attendance of court. Then within a, a few minutes, a judge issued a stay order. A, a judge issued that you can't arrest him. The order does not mention about the warrant that exists. But technically, uh, my senior will uh, look at it. When you look at the order, the parties are four. There is Jimmy Wanjigi, then there is the Inspector General of Police, there is the DPP and the DCI. The DCI's office falls under the, the Inspector General of Police. But the order says it is directed to the first and second respondent. Yeah. That is the Inspector General and the DPP. That 
simple technical lacuna, the DCI says he was never restrained. But the question is, once he brings him to court, the second respondent, who is the DPP, is the one who prosecutes. Murima judge has said, you cannot prosecute him. So, will the DCI prosecute? It becomes a miscarriage. Okay. Or it becomes a stillbirth the moment he's brought in court. Mm -hmm. So, the DCI is bringing Jimmy that I have complied with uh, Chief Magistrate Ochoi's order. I've arrested him. I brought him to court, but that is going to be here and there. The lawyers will do their stuff. But politically, Jimmy Wanjigi is an asset. Yeah. His value has gone up politically. Yeah. Remember, in this country, when you are arrested, I'm not saying that uh, professors should be arrested. When you are arrested towards an election time, <laughs> yeah. your political value mileage Goes grows because the citizens are now saying what wanna, wanna chokoza Jimmy Kwanini is yeah. it because he is competing against Baba so Jimmy has reinvented himself mm. from the past to a new Jimmy who is going to be a darling of the political class okay prof what do you think <laughs> um, uh, <coughs> uh, just to, to pick up from my, where my learned friend has, has left yeah. I, I think, I, think I, I view the event uh, from a, with a purely legalistic lens. Let's, let's look at the legalistic lens, lens first. Yeah. The legalistic lens is that uh, orders were issued by the chief ma by uh, the magistrate of Choi. Yeah. Uh, a warrant arising out of a claim uh, that uh, Jimmy Wanjigi, of course, uh, being a director of a company and therefore involved in a case in yeah. court, uh, ought to have attended court. Yeah. Okay. Uh, held in. Uh, in his office for over 18 hours. I think that for me, I look at the drama, the attempt at arresting him through these dramatic things yeah. as unnecessary. That was unnecessary. I think of overhyped. Yeah. And I think that is what brings in the political question, that you actually then politicizing a purely legal process. It is legal because yeah. there was a warrant of arrest initially issued. But again, once the uh, Justice Mrima, High Court judge, then issued orders. There is the question of compliance of yeah. court orders and disobedience of court orders. Because once the DCI officers were aware that orders have been issued by the High Court, what you do then is, is stop the, the entire process. Because the IG, the DCI, serves under the IG. So the, the right person to be sued would be the, the Inspector General. Yeah. And, and then, as, as, as my line friend uh, uh, has said, the DPP is also sued. Yeah. So well, why not simply comply with court orders and stop the entire drama, mm. save us you know, all this drama that, that we are seeing? That, that, that was, in my view, unnecessary. Yeah. But the, the political question then comes into play. And, and you see, the problem is that even where legal processes uh, obtain, as in the current case, this is a, a purely legal process uh, and politics because you then say, why spend, send so many officers? Yeah. Why the, the dramatic gear? Why simply by enforcing a warrant of arrest, why not employ, uh, you know, simpler means of simply arresting a normal, an, an ordinary citizen? Because Jim and Jiggy technically is just a citizen of the Republic of Kenya. Yeah. But the, the political stakes then come in when uh, we know that now he's, he's joined another political formation, uh, probably running, he's gone into, into Wiper Party mm. uh, uh, under the, the Kalonzo uh, Musioka, Excellency Kalonzo Musioka. So the, the, those, are then, those are the things that bring political questions. Yeah. Then the political, you can then blame the political class or bring in the political question, even where there's no politics. Mm. I think this could be a case of two things. One, misinterpretation of the court order issued by Justice Brima. Number two, excesses in trying to enforce a court order issued by Ochoi yeah. magistrate. I think, and, and, and then now you end up in this situation where, uh, as, as Lion Friend says, you read in politics into this, yeah. and then you end up giving uh, Jimmy Wanjigi political mileage. Okay. And I think, in my view, that uh, the police probably would have handled this better. Uh, ideally, you don't need all this high gear, all yeah. this uh, 
you know, outfit that, you know, now and then that, then now you have anti-terror police unit yeah. and it not even the ordinary police. In fact, and that's that what I was about you. to ask you. Yes. Who, who ideally, what you're calling a necessary drama, what should have happened, ideally? This is a land question. Yeah. It is a land dispute in court. It is a dispute over some land adjacent to their property acquired. Yes. And that land is said to belong to, to the companies belong, the director of the companies is Jimmy Wanjiki's wife. Mm. So the drama then brings into, the, into question whether it is the land question alone or whether the, there was something else. Secondly, I do not understand why the anti-terror police unit is involved in the entire process. Because once you bring in the anti-terror police unit, then the question of a land dispute and the alleged forgery of titles yeah. then falls on its back because it is no longer a land question. Perhaps there was more, or there's more than meets the eye. Yeah. And I think that is why Landed Friend then he says the political question comes into, in, in, into play. What is the real question herein? Okay. Is it simply the land case, which can be civil? Yeah. Because uh, we can be civil if it's a claim for possession and title. Yeah. That's a civil matter that you file under, under, under the Land Act, and the Land Registration Act. But if it is a question, a criminal question of forgery, it's an, and which, which, which is what was before the magistrate, there were charges supposed to be preferred, there was a defendant right there. There was an accused person right there. If Jimmy says that is it's Jimmy's wife who is in the title, I do not know, because they refer to Sun Hills Limited, a company. That means that you should then look for directors of that company. Yeah. If Jimmy is one of those directors, you summon him to appear in court. If he fails to appear as he did, yeah. then you issue warrants of arrest. Now it is the enforcement of these warrants yeah. that then raises, uh, you know, that, that is what catches the public eye. Mm. Why the anti-terror police unit? Mm. There must have been more. Okay. And I think we dramatize arrests in a manner that catches the eye. We dramatize arrests in a manner that is unnecessary. Mm. Court warrants should simply be presented, and where parties refuse to attend court, they can be apprehended at any time. There is never a time frame for implementing court order. Once a matter comes in court, if it is a criminal matter, it is mentioned, yeah. the person does not appear, the, another date is given, yeah. and the police is given time to arrest the individual. You'll yeah. find him anyway. They can't sit in their offices forever. So there was no need of camping outside it the for 17 hours It was unnecessary because a criminal trial yeah. will not take one day. A criminal trial will take time. He will have a right to a defense. There will be lawyers to defend the cause. He will be given time to file his defense and give documents. Yeah. So it is, it is um, an unnecessary high drama. Okay. And I think, I think that is... And then you know, you know what happens, uh, Trevor? Let me tell you this. Against the backdrop of either bad investigation yeah. or the backdrop of non-preparation, would you find such dramatic arrest? You don't need dramatic arrest. Senior citizens or citizens whose abode we know will always appear in court. That's why I'm saying yeah. where you see the anti-terror police unit involved, maybe there are other questions that are not in this okay. or that we do not know. Yeah. But as I said, let me be legalistic. The legalistic approach is there was a warrant of arrest. They wanted to enforce it. They did not have to enforce it this way. Okay. And uh, Omari, there's a question here. Charlo Woodrose, he says, Jimmy Wanjigi has been arrested due to his questionable business activities and not because of politics. We should not drag Raila and Uru's name into this issue. Let him face the law and should not bring politics into it. But even the manner in which it was done and the issues that are coming up, doesn't that then allow lawyers to have, to poke holes into the whole thing and at the end of the day, it all scrambles down and just diminishes? Because most Kenyans are saying that we are, we are subject them to a lot of drama like that, and then nothing comes out at the end of it. All through, I didn't know that this is the drama that we see is part of the police training, until when I saw it in the US, when they were arresting during the elections of uh, Joe Biden and Trump. A similar dramatic arrest was done where the police officers, the American police officers, are doing more than this. So is this part of the training of the police? Yes. Number two, why should there be such dramatic issues? The historical perspective to the Jimmy Wanjigi matter comes to play. There are questions about guns. I'm 
either lucky or unlucky to be part of those legal battles about those guns. There is an allegation that Jimmy Wanjigi has 14 guns, seven of them in now the DCI's possession. The remaining seven guns, which are military guns, prohibited guns, guns that are carried by terrorists, are in possession of Jimmy Wanjigi. In 2017, his Modega residence was attacked and a cage of guns that were picked from, uh, fr from his uh, office are a subject matter of a case before Justice Murima. I wouldn't want to deal much about it because, as I said, I'm privy to very much information being in that area. Therefore, the question is, did the DCI take the risks of his men and said, we bring not even the ATPU, but the tactical wing. There's a new, a new uh, allied team called the tactical team under the ATPU to come and arrest Jimmy Wanjing. So that risk, that historical perspective justifies the decision of the, deep, uh, the, the DCI to deploy the best type of commandos for the task ahead. Number two, Jimmy Wanjigi has been saying that he is being arrested by virtue of his political utterances. Yeah. I have said very clearly that the DCI investigates. A document called the decision to charge is only under 157 that the it is only the director of public prosecution with the power the discretional power to approve a charge it. So definitely the evidence gathered, whether in a fraud matter, whether in uh, whatever type of matter, must have met the threshold for the director of public prosecution to approve the charge. But as Jimmy Wanjiga, as I put it, being a politician in the making, openly, he has been a politician behind curtains, took advantage, he railed in one of the media houses that it is President Uhuru Kenyatta. It is Raila Odinga, which is totally out of context. The president and the, and the right prime minister are not in these criminal matters. He will want the nation to see that he is being persecuted because of his political position. This is a matter of 2010-2011. It has gone through the ELC matters. Now it is a criminal angle being, being pursued. So I, do th I don't think the narrative, I agree with that uh, citizen viewer that let Jimmy Wanjigi appear in court. Number two. Jimmy Wanjigi has developed a certain mode of operation. Every time he is supposed to be arrested, he will, in his own confession, has built a banker. He goes to his banker. The other time, it took three days. Those are more than 48 hours in a bank at Modaig. In Westlands, it is 18 hours. Which Kenyan? Today, if, if the police come here looking for me, it will only take me one minute, and I'm taken to the flight by the flying squad. So there is a certain type of behavior Jimmy has perfected, and therefore that warranted such massive force in the event that he releases the alleged guns that he has and can hurt those people. The question of, of dragging politics politics into this matter yeah. is purely situation. As I said, Jimmy is trying to look for relevance at this time, politically. But the question that I as a lawyer and uh, my senior, uh, senior counsel is here, he has put it clearly. Legal matters need be dealt with legally. Politics shouldn't be dragged into a question of fraud. If indeed there is a complainant, Jimmy will have his day in court. He got his day before the judge. The judge has stopped 
his, prose uh, his prosecution, his arrest, and that's why I'm saying the matter will now be a legal question. Yeah. Although it, uh, it, it portrays a serious political undertone with serious dynami dynamics, but that will be subdued within a very short time. Okay. And when you look at it, the right prime minister has not responded. Yeah. He has completely ignored to be dragged into that matter. Then the president has not responded into this matter. In the church, it, in the petition before uh, the judge, the name of the president and the name of Raila Odinga are not there. Okay. And therefore, Jimmy Wanjigi trying to drag in the emotions that is being harassed by the president is purely addressing his constituents. Okay. You saw them coming, demonstrating there, and trying to put Jimmy politically relevant. Okay. To me, as a political analyst and as a lawyer, I will advise Jimmy and his illegal team to battle their matter legally yeah. and avoid the unnecessary drama okay. that is, uh, is in, in place. Okay. Prof, what is the impact of this declaration? One court says arrest, give an arrest warrant, the other one says don't arrest. No, no, there, 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 are, there are two levels of court. The yeah. Oso is a magistrate, law court. So that is the magistrate trying the matter in yeah. court. Uh, the second level is the high court. The high court uh, will sit over decisions of the lower court. So the high court is a higher, a higher court. Mm. And, and, and once orders are given by the court, those orders ought to be complied with immediately. So the high court order has to be complied with. Judge Mirima's orders have, uh, have, have to be complied with. Yeah. So uh, that, that is the effect. But let me say this, and as, as uh, my line friend, uh, uh, Mr. Maria, has said, uh, these are legal questions. Uh, absent the name of His Excellency Rael Odinga, absent the name of His Excellency Uru Kenyatta, they are not parties to the High Court litigation. And that is why this political, uh, the high sounding political statements, in my view, yeah. are unnecessary. They don't make sense. You do not drag politicians to private questions in litigation before courts of law. Yeah. Because there, there is no direct link. You would have had them uh, uh, added onto these suits yeah. if at all there was a political question. It is not there. It's a legal question. And, and I think that now that they have an order yeah. uh, from the High Court, what they need to pursue, in my view, is contempt. Or, you know, go to court, tell the court that we obtained these orders and this, these orders have been disobeyed. And then you, you get orders against the peop, individuals who have disobeyed the orders. So that, that's how you deal with these questions. Okay. But I think, as I said again, um, I, I think this is a political time. You know, we, we've gone into what we call the sensitive political epoch, mm -hmm. when individuals will sound politics or use politics as a defense uh, to every question facing them because you're in politics and therefore it is political. But also, of course, there's the converse that you can also, uh, uh, you know, politics can also be used to, 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 to settle certain scores during this time as well. Yeah. So I think, I think it is easy for Jig in this one because in politics and there are real legal questions that are, are, are you know, dealt with in court. And I think that th there's an easy answer there, an easy way there. Okay. But the, uh, the ATPU question, I think Leonard Friend has, has responded to that very well. Mm -hmm. I think there are other underlying questions, and I think he, as the advocate for the institution, I think he knows yeah. uh, much more than you do. <laughs> so, and, and that is why the police probably went there yeah. armed, knowing that perhaps you're dealing with a dicey situation yeah. of uh, the possibility of, of arms. Maybe they are looking for something else. Because at times, arrests are effected over one thing, but the police go into search to make searches for other things. Okay. That's why you find that someone is arrested for little things, or perhaps possessing a gun, and they go and find other things. So they go on a corruption question, and they get arms. Then you wonder, what was this all about? I think probably they had, uh, in hindsight, they had things that they were looking for other than this question of... of so there's more than meets the eye. So there's more than meets the eye. Okay. Uh, Omari, is there proof then that Jimmy Wanjigi funds parties, or is this just a perception? What politicians talk yeah. is what Kenyans want to know. In their own admission, yeah. the politicians have admitted that Jimmy Wanjigi has been funding them. 
he himself has admitted he has been funding them. What you can't really prove, Jimmy Wanjigi is a private citizen, he runs his own businesses, he decides who to fund, who not to fund. So really, whether he funds or he doesn't fund, there is a political perception outside to that effect that he is the person who funds all the uh, formations that he has been there. Two, there's also a perception that his companies have always gotten business. The battle over the SGR where his companies either allegedly, I'm not sure, lost the tenders, then he moved to the other political formation is another question altogether. All, all so the question that might now arise, yeah. if indeed he has fallen out of favor, if indeed he was protected from any form of uh, action being taken by virtue of him in a political party that was in control of arms of uh, government, investigative arms of government, or he was perceived to be close to the powers and be, yeah. is he likely now to be exposed? As Professor Mycenae says it, this is the epoch of political uh, uh, finality in questions. Is Jimmy now being abandoned and being told, carry the burden that the law has been uh, uh, what you have been getting uh, protection, now nobody wants to deal with it. Also, there is a question. Is it true the perception being put by other uh, people that the DCI was condemned to four months imprisonment, courtesy of Jimmy Wanjig? Is the DCI now revenge because now he has gotten Jimmy Wanjigi off guard? Those are the questions that now will be taken out of the political terrain. But Jimmy Wanjigi has tactfully avoided dragging in George Kinoti's name as the person who is after his neck. Because he knows very well that the DCI can only investigate, it ends there. The decision to charge remains with the DPP. Once the DPP is satisfied that there is enough evidence, he approves the charge sheet and he takes you to court under Article 157. So that is why Jimmy Wanjigi has put his guns straight where it makes political capital. Yeah. But definitely it is going to backfire badly. Because one, there is nowhere the yeah. president is a part in this matter. Two, there is nowhere Ray Lodinga is interested in that land. If the battle was that Ray Lodinga's relatives or the president's first family is interested in that land, then there is a remote connection between the interests of Jimmy yeah. and the interests of the president and Raila Odinga. So in my own perspective, as I put it very clearly, that is the law and that is the position. But let me look at what a uh, senior counsel has raised. The high court orders vis-a-vis -vis the magistrate's orders. There was no mention during the hearing in a magistrate's court that there is a high court matter proceeding. Jimmy Wanjigi's file was taken because he was bonded, he was summoned to appear before a magistrate. His lawyers were not in court to explain where he was. The lawyers must have been in the upper court, the high court. So the police and the prosecutor provided the file and asked that the accused be called, he was not there, automatically they asked for a warrant of arrest. The magistrate gave a warrant of arrest without any prior knowledge that there is another matter proceeding in the high court. The high court proceeded without material disclosure that there is a matter there is a warrant of arrest that has been issued. I've looked at that order very critically. The order does not suspend, does not refer, does not connote that it, the judge is aware about that warrant of arrest. So here are two court orders, one from a magistrate's court and one from I, I mean, none of these two 
are aware. That knowledge is going to be brought today to the magistrate that, look, there is a high court order here. So the question of contempt is going to be tricky because, one, the order that was issued was issued quite late. Had it been served, there has been jurisprudential questions whether the social media can be the basis of service to anybody. Yeah. That has not been put in the Kenyan law that if I see Facebook an order as a, as a DCI, as an IG, I will, I will uh, obey that order. Yeah. Service had to be done. Okay. What does service mean? Once they have been served, then there is a bureaucratic issue that they must come to court to verify whether that order is genuine or that order came from River Road. That process, the DCI must have taken advantage of that gap, or actually the DCI was never served. And as I've said, the orders are specific yeah. to the first and second respondent to the exclusion of the DCI. Was it at an, an error on the lawyers or was it an error on the judge? The parties are three. Why will you issue orders specific to two parties yeah. and remove that. So in my own view, I think that is a legal mind. Okay. Uh, lawyers are going to make a lot of money because you see, as we'll be there hired to defend whichever side is there, the this final decider will be the court okay. and the court is paid to make that decision. But for now, it is unfortunate or Jimmy Wanjigi was taken to Kamkunji police station. He will be arraigned in court today. Okay. The courts will issue directions okay. pursuant to the evidence and the affidavit, the DCI will pro produce in court, yeah. the IG will produce in court, and the prosecutor will tell the court what happened and where the positions, the okay. court will make a decision. Okay, so Prof, now that he's being, he's being taken to Kamkunji, of course, then he'll be presented in court, what is it likely going to be the outcome? So will the, the, the courts will they release him on bond again, or will it, because he hasn't come, out, come back to court at some point, will they now say that he's likely not to honor someone? What happens now? Yeah, the, 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 the lapse that may have happened, and uh, Maria has, has, has alluded to that, uh, perhaps there should have been a, a lawyer in the law in the law court uh, seeking an adjournment or putting aside the file uh, pending uh, the high court dealing with a similar question yeah. uh, that of course was an application or petition stopping the arrest where he secured orders. Now what will happen then is that when he appears in court this morning I'm sure the warrant will be revisited and what will happen is that the, his lawyers will then come with a court order from the High Court and they'll inform the magistrate that there's a court order uh, that was issued yesterday by Judge Mrima stopping his arrest and that the police have arrested him. We then apply that in view of these orders, the, the warrants in question then are, are non-existent or be lifted because there's an order staying the arrest and staying the prosecution. Then of course the magistrate will, as a matter of course, uh, uh, stop, give orders, because the court, the magistrate must comply with the orders of the High Court. They have no choice. It is not, it is what we call um, in, in, uh, in the court system, we have something called the hierarchy, a hierarchy system where the lower court, the magistrate must comply or is sub subject to the orders of the High Court, High Court to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. You can see how the BBI matter is, is as advanced from yeah. the High Court to the, to the Supreme Court. Yeah. So the magistrates at the lower court must comply with the orders of the judge. They cannot question and yeah. say that, you know, why the judge do this and that. So that, that's the easier part. Of course, the more difficult part is that uh, after uh, Jimmy Wanjiki and his lawyers will be saying that there was an order that was existing and in spite of the existence of the order or your knowledge of the order, you chose to arrest. Uh, uh, that again will be a question now before the judge. Yeah. They will have to argue that or file whatever nature of application they want for contempt uh, before the uh, judge Mrima when the file is next before uh, the judge. Now this contempt so, so is against are, the arrest. Yes, against the arresting team, but that will be now in the High Court. So you have uh, several legal questions and as uh, Danson seems to suggest that uh, 
uh, lawyers will make money out of the process. I think, they, <laughs> I think they, they'll simply be doing their job to, yeah. to defend uh, the interests of, of parties before the court. Because when there are violations of a constitutional nature, of a statutory nature, of a civil nature, you must protest as an advocate. You must get your arms and, and appear for the party that uh, that is injured okay yes i have to take a quick break here on debris when you come back i see some of your feedback we'll read some of them when we come back i have the legal minds here trying to make heads and tails of all the legal battle that's going on when we come back we talk about the bbi we'll scatter around it because it's an active court case as we speak yeah. but we'll speak about the effects of the ruling whichever way it takes i'd also like to hear your views on that at trevor media citizen tv can you use the hashtag daybreak see you in just a bit <laughs>